Yo, yo, it's Kit Bybee here with the TorchCast. Uh, today is a very special episode. I don't have a guest here. I'm going to run through the news by myself uh, fairly quickly here while I'm drinking my tea in my apartment. And uh, then I'm going to air an interview I did with uh, President David Eisler. Uh, we recorded it last week. He had a lot of great things to say. So I'm going to jump to some music right now. Then we'll do the news and then we'll do the interview. Thanks for listening. The rain falls hard on a humdrum town. This town has dragged you down. Oh, the rain falls hard on a humdrum town. This town has dragged you down. All right, so the first piece of news here, uh, there was a discussion held last week uh, by the Office of Multicultural Student Services, or OMSS, about Black Lives Matter, um, stereotypes, and peaceful protests. This is a part of an ongoing conversation or uh, discussion about race that's going on on campus. Um, Another piece of news here, Lot 17 is being expanded to accommodate for lost spots due to the Swan Annex construction. I think we're losing uh, 107 spots uh, due to the construction, but Lot 17 is being expanded to uh, create 117 new spots. So a little bit of a uh, spot profit, if you will. But uh, students will have to get used to a new parking routine if they consistently park next to Swan. All right, Ferris. Um, has held an event uh, to educate students about domestic violence. Uh, It was hosted by the uh, Women's Information Service Incorporated, or WISE. Uh, Another thing here, we got uh, Big Fish, a Broadway musical, is being brought to Ferris, uh, put on by the uh, theater people here. Uh, The show times are going to be November 3rd through 5th at 7.30 at Williams Auditorium, and November 6th at 2.30 p.m. Those are all at Williams. Um, I'm definitely going to go see it. I love the plays they do here. It's going to be a good time. All right. Uh, Ferris Ghost Supper uh, was held, excuse me, is being held on November 3rd um, from 5 to 9 p.m. Um, it's put on by the Circle of Tribal Nations. It's a, it's a really good time. I went last year, so I would encourage everyone to go out there. It's going to be at the uh, West Campus Community Center. And last piece here, uh, Ferris Volleyball is uh, on a hot streak here. I think they uh, won tonight, too. I'm recording this on Tuesday, so I think they are uh, doing really well. All right, from here, we're going to go right into the Eisel interview. I'll play a quick piece of music, and uh, the next thing you hear will be uh, the interview with President Eisler. So uh, thanks for listening. And everybody's got to live their life, and God knows I've got to live mine. God knows I've got to live mine. So, uh, President Eisler, it's good to good to see you. Thanks for having me. Pleased that pleased that you would do this and look forward to our conversation. All right, so let's jump right into it. Um, okay. First of all, what's your background? Uh, how did you get here to Ferris? Well, I think many people on campus know that, that my academic training is is as a musician. I was trained as a classical clarinetist, and I have I have three degrees in in clarinet performance, and I my goal in life was to be either a, a classical performer like with a symphony, or to be a university faculty member. And when I graduated with my master's degree, I, it was really hard for me to find a job, but eventually I found a position teaching clarinet uh, at a strong music program in in Alabama at Troy State University, and as as I worked there, I had some opportunities to organize programs and develop curriculum. I left there as associate dean of their School of Fine Arts. Then I went to Eastern New Mexico University in Portales, New Mexico, and I was their dean of fine arts. And then from New Mexico, we moved to Utah, and I was the provost or the vice president for academic affairs uh, at Weber State University, and then. In 2003, we had the opportunity to join Ferris State University serving as their president. Did you? Is this something you thought you'd be doing when you were in college? I never aspired to be a president. In fact, when my, my first dean at Troy State asked me to be his associate dean, I told him no because I didn't want to do what he was mm-hmm. doing. Wow. Cool. Um, so uh, as a little warm-up, we had a couple questions we answered on the torch a few weeks ago. Uh, the first one is, uh, if you could listen to two bands for the rest of your life, and only those two bands are artists, uh, what would they be? That that's a hard question because I listen to a lot of I listen to a lot of organizations, but I think 
certainly one of my, I, I love a cappella music, so I, I I think I could spend a lifetime listening to Straight No Chaser because I, yeah. I I think they just do so many so many different different types like that, and I I guess one of these would be maybe a crossover jazz group, maybe somebody like the Rippingtons who combine just incredible artistry and uh, really superb musicianship and very innovative uh, music, but converting to two, I could probably name five or six yeah. more. And I've, I've left out, you know, I'd love to listen to the Beatles for the rest of my life. Yeah. Uh, that's, you know, I think that, but if I had to do two, those would probably be the two. Uh, we had a couple people say Miles Davis. Uh, are you a fan of him? Uh, I, I really love the work that Miles Davis did, but I think for me, you know, Miles Davis, I take in, in somewhat small small yeah. doses. Uh, but I think these are people that I could listen to for a long time. Okay, great. And then the other question uh, that we answered on the Torchcast was, uh, if you could have one last meal, like a death row and a last meal, what would that be? Oh. Hmm. Well, we we really love seafood in our house, mm -hmm. and I think uh, you know maybe maybe a great piece of walleye or maybe a great piece of a tuna. But I, I love fish, so I think it'd be some 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 sort of fish. Probably with a baked potato, fresh vegetables, and a large salad. Great. All right. Um, and my next question is, what are you most excited for uh, in the next five or so years at Ferris? Well, there are a number of things that I think are very exciting for what we're doing at Ferris. And you just look out and see what's happening with the construction of this new residence hall next mm -hmm. to the University Center. So I think as we're reconceptualizing residence life, at Ferris, I think that's extraordinarily exciting. Mm -hmm. I think that that's changing, improving, building on the student experience at Ferris. And I think there's a progression there. You look at the things that we've developed in terms of food on campus with the rock. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, then this place that students can gather at the university center, this wonderful center of learning. Uh, at, at the flight building, and I think being able to do that with a whole experience, I think that's very exciting. Yeah. Um, I'm continually interested in how this, the technology is influencing the ways that we learn, the ways that we have all these information sources and how we learn to use them, because there's so much information that's available to us, and you think about the, the object of a education is to help students develop uh, a, a, a basis, a grounding, an educated background, and then learning how to learn. Mm -hmm. And being able to take the things they learn, you know, just the general education, the pieces we provide, and then the specialties in their career, and then being able to do this with this ability to learn. Because we're graduating students that are going to do careers that haven't been invented. Yet. Right. So I think thinking how we encompass that is, I think, incredibly exciting. So the continued development of that in our academic program along with the residence life, I think, I think is a really exciting time to be, be at Ferris State University. And I, I would just add to that, and I'm so impressed with our students at Ferris. I see the things that our Ferris students do in terms of being engaged and helping others that just are so incredibly impressive. So I, I think this is the best group of students we've ever had. Right. And I remember coming uh, to Ferris when I was, I think I was probably 10 or 11 years old to do a hockey camp. Mm -hmm. And just even 10 years ago, the campus has totally changed. And well, so, and we should certainly add in there that with the success of our athletic teams, you think about how much fun it is, you know, to go to a volleyball game, or a mm -hmm. game, or an ice hockey game, or a basketball game, or, you know, women's soccer, we have women's softball. There's so many things that are happening that I think are just really exciting yeah, for our campus. I agree. All right, and uh, my next question is, what has been your greatest challenge as uh, Ferris's president? Well, I'm not a person who always thinks of things in, in greatest, but there, there are lots of challenges mm -hmm. that, that I think a university faces uh, in, in today's society. And I think, I think the number one challenge for every education institution is how do we help students learn? How do we help students succeed? So I think that you know, everything we do begins with the education that we provide. And I think that that's at the core. So, you know, how do we take these 
incredibly talented faculty we have, students who come to Ferris, how do we create that best educational experience with them so that, so that they graduate and that they graduate prepared to be successful, not just in their career, but also so they're graduating prepared to be great citizens. So wherever they live, that's a better place because of it. So I think that's the most important piece. Mm -hmm. I think there are other things that go with that that I think are really important. I, but certainly cost is a concern. We've worked really hard. Uh, the, in the time I've been at Ferris, tuition has not gone up on an average greater than the cost of inflation. Mm -hmm. But still, those costs are significant. So how do we constrain costs? And then how can we provide more support for students? And we continually try to enhance the financial aid that's available to students. And I'm pretty excited about this Ferris Challenge Scholars campaign that we have going on to raise more scholarship endowments for our students so we can help support their efforts. So I think that would certainly be a second piece uh, that's engaged with that. And then I think the third piece that's really important is we're an institution founded around the idea of opportunity. And so how do we create opportunity and access? And when you think about the changing demographics in our country, how do we help our institution be open and welcoming to people who come from families that they're the first person in, the, in their family to go to college? I'm a first generation mm -hmm. college student. How do we help students who come from families where there's not a history or not a process where they were regularly going to college? How do we reach out and help students want to go to college be prepared for college and be successful in college. And so how we change that environment so that we're welcoming and that we're supportive of all students, whatever their interests, whatever their backgrounds, whatever their interests may be. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, I think the flip side of the challenge would be what's the most rewarding or, uh, aspect of the job? Well, I think the opportunity to watch students, to watch students learn, to get to learn, to get the get to know students. Uh, you know, to me, there's so many things our students do that just make me immensely proud. Mm -hmm. I go to the big event. You know, a couple of weeks ago, students were out cleaning up alleys. I, right. I, I never did anything like that when I was in college. I'm so impressed with our students. And, you know, for me, I'm just incredibly impressed with our students. I love shaking their hands when they graduate, when they walk across their stage and I think that I've done 89 commencement ceremonies at, at Ferris. And every single one, every single student is really, really exciting. When you see students who begin as, as freshmen or as transfers and they're uncertain, they don't, they don't know their way around, they don't know if this is the right place for them. And then to see them stride up to the stage, get their diploma, shake my hand and be so proud and so confident well, that's 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 really rewarding to see what our university, our faculty and staff have done with our students to help them help them graduate and be prepared to be successful. For sure. Do you have a favorite memory from your time here? Oh, favorite memory. Hmm. There are, there are lots there are lots of favorite memories that I have 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 from the university. I think singling out one uh, is pretty tough, but I'm going I'm I'm to give you a couple of it, okay. if that's okay. Um, I remember the first time I went to the big event, mm -hmm. and I just couldn't believe that our students had done this. They were doing this thing uh, for our university, and it was so incredibly exciting, and uh, that, was, that was pretty neat. Uh, I remember... Remember uh, when I interviewed here, and the impression that was in that was in 2003. And I remember the impression that the people who engaged with the search made on me, and how how much they cared about the university and what a difference it made. I remember two years ago when I was seriously ill and I couldn't go to Pancakes with the President. And you know, our students gave me these three 
huge cards that they have all signed. That meant so much to me. Mm -hmm. I remember when we were in Tampa and our hockey team was, was playing for the national championship in hockey. Uh, uh, there, there's so many memories, uh, so many really poignant moments. And I think one of those memories may happen you know, on uh, uh, the first Thursday in, in November at our Ferris Foundation Gala. Mm -hmm. I think the, it's going to be a very special memory that night. Yeah. All right, and then uh, my last question is, uh, what is your best general advice to students? Oh, thank you for asking. Well, I think Every student, when they come to college, hears from us, get engaged. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think that when I, when I visit with students like yourself, when I see the students who are really actively involved with student government, or they're involved with an RSO, or they're part of a professional society, or they've just become very actively engaged with their major or their interest or a passion that they have, it's possible to go to college and only receive a part of the experience. Mm -hmm. And I think that the, going to college is such a special time in a young person's life that they ought to take advantage of everything the university has to offer. And there are so many things that our university does and there's so many events that we do that I get to go to where I, I learn so much from it. So I think that's the first part. Mm -hmm. I think the second part is that you have to be disciplined about going to school. You need to go to class. You have to do the preparation. You have to do the homework. And the more mature you get as a student, you don't just do what's required because life isn't about doing what's required. Life is about doing the things that help you excel. And if you're only doing the bare minimum, you're not going to benefit from this in the way that you really can. So don't think about what's required. Think about this is going to be your life. It's going to be your career. You know, really get engaged in that and mm -hmm. do, do more than what, what's required. You know, go beyond that because that's what life is. If, you, if you're going to be successful, you really need, really need to do that part. And then I think the third piece is help others because a life that's spent just looking at your own interests can be a pretty shallow life but I think when you reach out and you help others I think that's when life really becomes meaningful so everybody here at the university is busy mm -hmm. but we all need to find a way that we can we can make a difference for others awesome well, thanks so much for meeting with me. Uh, if you have anything else you'd like to say, you have the floor. Well, I think that we're all blessed to be an extraordinary institution. You know, an institution that celebrates the ideals, the vision, the concepts that our founders had. And I think the approach that, that we do at Ferris, where we talk, we take, we have students in small classes with faculty who have, who have lots of experiences, real world experiences where we engage students in a discipline, in something that can lead to a career. I think that's an extraordinary educational environment. I think I'm so proud of what our faculty, staff, and students do at Ferris. You know, I consider myself really, really fortunate to be at this special place. Great. Well, thanks so much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. All right. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, remember to like and share the Torchcast on your Facebook and uh, keep listening every week for new guests, new topics, and uh, a whole lot of fun. All right. Thanks, Ferris.